It's July 6th, 2008, a quarter after 9 p.m. We're in London, England for the Wimbledon men's singles final between Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer. Nadal is serving, one point away from winning a match that began almost seven hours ago. In that time, the two greatest men's tennis players on earth have played with some delays what might be the greatest match in Wimbledon history, maybe in all of tennis history. Before this epic reaches its monumental end, let's appreciate the tense, bizarre, and jaw-dropping moments that brought us here. Let's rewind. To begin with, some of the people here at the All England Club beg for individual rewinds. There is history in this crowd, relevant history. Before the match, the players shook hands with Manuel Santana. Santana's presence recalls a great era in Spanish sport. In 1964, Spain's soccer team won their first ever Euro Cup. Two years later, Santana, who famously hated playing on grass, won on grass, becoming the first ever Spaniard to take the Wimbledon men's singles title. Well, a week before this match, Spain won their second ever Euro Cup. Now Rafa has the chance to become the second ever Spaniard to win Wimbledon. And look who else is here, Bjorn Borg. Borg won five straight Wimbledons starting in 1976, the last of which was the legendary 1980 final against John McEnroe, which went five sets and included an incredible fourth set tiebreak. McEnroe stopped Borg's streak in 1981, and hey, look, he's here too. Oh, and Gwen Stefani and Gavin Rossdale are here. They're tight with Federer. That's not really important, but I feel like you needed to know. Anyway, the tennis legends here in the crowd set a nice stage for the colossal importance of this Nadal-Federer battle. For the last four years or so, these two men have owned the sport. The 22-year-old Nadal dominates on clay and has won four straight French Opens. None of the other majors, though. So winning today would be historic for Spain and also a big turning point for Nadal, his first incursion into Federer's turf. Because Federer rules basically all the non-clay surfaces, especially grass. If he wins today, he will break Borg's record streak with a sixth straight Wimbledon championship. And you can see how Nadal's excellence on clay has helped build a winning record against Federer. He just hasn't gotten it done on a grass court. The surface-specific dominance of these two is so stark that they participated in a gimmicky Battle of the Surfaces match in 2007 on Nadal's home island of Mallorca. The Spaniard won that, but we can all agree that doesn't answer the real question. The real question, of course, is who the better player is here in 2008. Rankings aside, analysts mostly agree that whoever wins this match can claim the crown of best men's tennis player on earth. Federer probably has more to lose in this conversation. He's ranked number one in the world and grass is his domain, but he's been in a rut. Roger suffered through a few months of mononucleosis in early 08, and it affected his play. He lost some matches you wouldn't expect, including a defeat at the hands of young upstart Novak Djokovic in the Australian Open semifinal. And while no one expected Federer to beat Nadal at this year's French Open, he didn't even put up his usual fight, dropping an embarrassing bagel to end a three-set defeat. But any worries about Fed's health have abated. The 26-year-old cruised through his Wimbledon bracket, including a nice poetic win over Mario Ancic, the last person to beat Fed at Wimbledon before this current run of dominance. Before today, Federer hasn't even lost a set. But as you can see, Federer has lost some sets today. Nadal opened the match by jumping all over his opponent, pounding his lefty serves at Federer's backhand, finishing some points very quickly. And he broke the first two sets open, not just with powerful ground strokes, but with gorgeous passing shots from the baseline. Federer had his opportunities against Nadal's serve, but blew nearly all of them. Lame returns, really. Fed converted a single break point off Nadal in the second set, but went on to lose that set and hasn't broken Nadal since. It really felt like Federer was toast. So that's how these two 6 4s got on the scoreboard. While we're looking at the scoreboard, I want to talk about this part challenges. That's another area in which Federer has struggled. In 2007, Wimbledon followed other major tournaments by adopting the use of Hawkeye, a fancy computer tracker to check where the ball had landed. From that point forward, players could challenge umpire calls if they thought a shot called out was in or vice versa. Federer won the Wimbledon final over Nadal that year, but not without great frustration when Hawkeye repeatedly confirmed Nadal's challenges against him. Roger actually asked to have the thing turned off. And Hawkeye's been coming through for Nadal again today. Rafa's won a couple challenges, including a ballsy one in the middle of a breakpoint in the third set, whereas Federer hasn't demonstrated as keen an eye. 
So yeah, Federer is coming off a French Open beatdown, and today he's been burned by challenges and failed nearly every attempt to break. And yet we're deep into a fifth set. Federer recovered, so clearly a lot has happened. One thing there, see these wraps on Nadal's legs? He wears those for support because of recurring knee problems. He's already had a pretty serious scare at Wimbledon, although he recovered to win that match against Mikhail Yuzhny. And today, Nadal went down again, early in the third set. He didn't win another point that game, but seemed okay after a quick consultation with the trainer. Perhaps it's a coincidence, but not much later in that third set, Federer started to show signs that he wasn't fully cooked. He fell down love 40 on his own serve, but with his back against the wall, rallied to save a bunch of break points and hold serve. Then Mother Nature intervened. So something you'll notice about our big moment here is that it's getting dark out. We're past 9 p.m. A year after this, you might not be able to see this guy. They're installing a retractable roof over center court. But it's not here yet, and with Federer up 5-4 in the third set, it started pouring. The umbrellas unfurled, the tarps came out, and the chair umpire got wheeled into his man cubby. We'll bring him out of his box a little bit later on. The match had already been delayed about half an hour by weather, and there was yet another delay in the middle of the fifth set. And this would have been a long match even without rain delays. Neither player broke serve in the third or fourth sets. Federer had to take both of those in tie breaks. But here in the fifth, there are no tie breaks. Someone has to break serve in order to win two games in a row and end the thing. It's getting dark enough that both players have been struggling to see. Camera flashes are becoming a problem in the dimmer light. The umpire has flirted with pausing the match until tomorrow, but that's Monday, which would be less than ideal for everyone. So we're all hoping to get this done tonight. And we're here at match point because Nadal just finally became the first player in hours to break serve. That only means so much though. Federer is unrelenting, he is a pest. And Nadal knows full well that if you don't finish the job against Federer, he can come back and ruin your whole goddamn year. The first time Nadal and Federer met in a final was 2005, the Miami Masters. The 18-year-old Nadal won the first two sets only to slowly crumble in a five-set defeat. Last year was worse. We know Federer won the 07 Wimbledon final, but we haven't discussed how close Nadal came. Rafa had numerous opportunities to break in the fifth set of that one, but blew all of them, squandering his momentum to fall in five sets. He spent half an hour that night weeping in the locker room, describing himself as utterly destroyed by his collapse. It's gonna hurt even worse if Nadal can't get it done tonight, because he's come right up to the championship precipice a couple times. That tiebreak to end the fourth set was an instant classic. It reminded people of the legendary Borg-McEnroe tiebreak from 1980. But Rafa won't remember it fondly. He double faulted in that one and blew two match points. He lost the first on a big Federer serve and lost the second on his own serve, watching this stupefyingly brilliant Federer passing shot beat him down the line. Even here, just moments ago, Federer refused to go down. After finally breaking, Nadal served for the match only for Federer to return it with one of the boldest cross-court backhands you'll ever see. So Nadal knows he has to get this done. For Spain, for his own status as arguably the best male tennis player in the world and not just on clay. To be remembered as the victor of the greatest match ever in the Wimbledon pantheon alongside legends who are here tonight watching him. He will have demonstrated persistence, patience, and poise in spite of his own misfortune. Above all else, he will have bested his rival the number one player on the planet in a stadium he has ruled for most of this decade. This is it. Welcome to a moment in history. There's a new man at the head of match tennis. Thank you very much for watching Rewinder. If you enjoyed that episode and want to learn more about that match, I highly recommend this book. It's called Strokes of Genius, and I read all of it.